Hello and welcome back to another brewing, home brewing video. Uh, today is bottling day. Uh, about two weeks ago, I filmed the video where I brewed the vanilla stout. And the day before that, I brewed a red ale. They've both been sitting, like I said, approximately two weeks. They're ready to be bottled. Uh, I haven't been checking the gravity, which is what's going to determine the final percentage. Because I know these kits, I know that after two weeks sitting in the, fer uh, in the fermenting buckets, they're ready to go. Before you can bottle, you need to sanitize. Same as with brewing, you want to sanitize everything. This is a bottle washer. Pretty simple concept. Sanitizing fluid in the washer, you push down on it with the bottle. Bottle's cleaned. If you don't own one of these or you don't want to buy one, the other thing you can do is you can take your bucket that's, uh, or pot in this case, that's full of sanitizing liquid, submerge the bottle a bit to get uh, some liquid in there. You don't really need to tighten it up the lid down, you just want it in there loosely. Give it a good shake. Sorry I'm chopping my head off, I'm not really uh, set up for filming. Either one of those two methods works just fine. I sit on my bottling tree to let, because <laughs> I'm spraying fluid all over the place, let the uh, sanitizing fluid dry up a little bit. You don't want to rinse after you've sanitized. They also don't need to be completely dry. This, by the way, is my bottling tree. It's currently full of bottles. You don't need one of these. You can stick your bottles in just about anything. You know, the, the dish rack, uh, your sink, as long as they're clean, whatever works. I bought that because I wanted it. So. With a bottling bucket, it's got a tap on the bottom, you don't have to be a genius, this is pretty easy. So just put that under there and fill it. But before you do that, conditioning tablets. These help clarify and carbonate the beer, otherwise you just end up with a bottle of flat beer. This is beer now, by the way. It's just flat. And it's not clear, clarified, right? It's a stat, it's never gonna get clear. Now, with the Cooper's kits, I would use only five of these pellets uh, in one of these bottles, but I did notice that the Moncton's kits that I've been using didn't carbonate as well, so I'm going to go with six this time. You don't have to put them in first, you can put them in after, doesn't matter. These are 500 milliliter bottles. I apologize for the American viewers, I don't know what that is in fluid ounces, I can't remember. Uh, I meant to look it up, I forgot. Sorry about that. If I remember, I'll put a notation in. That seam right there, that's the 500 milliliter mark. And that's what I aim for when I'm filling. I actually aim for slightly above that. It's fine. You don't want to turn the tap all the way because it'll come out in a rush and it'll foam up a lot more. Even though it's not carbonated, it will still foam if it's pouring quickly. So that's why I have the bottle on a bit of an angle, just like, you're, just like you would always pour beer or anything that carbonates, uh, frankly. Honestly, you don't need a video to show you how to pour beer out of, a, out of a tap, but it's part of the process I figured I'd show you. Up next is the bottling wand, which is, uh, it'll be my first time bottling with bottling wands, so let's hope I do it right. Well, not my first time, but my first time in my own setup. There we go. Okay. Put the cap on. That's done. Next up, the red ale and the bottling wand. So again, I'm going to put in six carbonation tablets. I'm going to be doing that with every bottle. I'm only going to show you one of each, uh, and then I'm going to cut away, and I'll come back when I'm done. And at that point, I would like to talk about uh, equipment costs in detail. In the last video, I, I discussed equipment costs uh, as I remembered them offhand. Uh, this time I looked them up, I have a list. If you're just looking to get into this, I give you approximately what the minimum equipment you're going to need is going to cost you. This isn't part of minimum equipment, neither is that bottle washer. So, here's hoping I do this right. This is a bit of a trick. It's siphoning, which means the source 
has to be lower down than the uh, sorry, the destination has to be lower down than the source. You lift up the plunger, push it back down, gets the fluid going down the hose. And then you depress the hose and it starts, you press the end of the boiling one, which has a little, I sh should have showed you earlier, but oh well, has a little um, tip on it that as long as you're not pushing down, stops the liquid from coming out. Once you are pushing down, lets the liquid come out. And then as soon as I pull back up, it will stop the liquid from coming out of the hose again. And now that the hose is primed, it, it will be primed for the entire bottling process. And that's it. Okay. So because the boiling wand is in there, you don't want to aim for that seam. You want to aim almost for the top of the bottle. Because once you pull the, the wand out, it drops back down to... Eh, it's a little tough to see on camera. Drop back down to about there, just above the seam, right where I want it to be. Take my cap out of my uh, bucket of fluid. That's where I store all my caps when I'm growing, when I'm uh, bottling. It's just in the sanitization fluid. That's that done. And that's the two different bottling methods. That's it. Uh, you don't really need to watch me keep doing this, so I will bring you back once I'm done bottling, and we can discuss costs. Sorry, I keep chopping my head off. Uh, I'm filming on my phone. I don't really have a lot of control over it, don't have a lot of control of the angles, and while the bottling space is probably one of the most organized uh, spaces in our home, <laughs> it's not very big, so I, uh, I only have so many angles I can use. Well, I will be back once all of this is done, and this is going to take a bit. We'll see you in a little while. Hello and welcome back. I'm not done bottling yet, but I've come up with something I think is going to make my life a little bit easier. <laughs> Uh, I was holding the bottles one at a time, filling them up, and it was fidgety and it was annoying, the bottling one. Uh, by the way, that black nib there, trying to background it against the uh, bottle, uh, was what I was talking about. If I push that down, the beer will come out. Uh, this specific bottling wand is spring-loaded. You can get them with a the spring or without. Uh, without the spring, they're essentially just held in place by the pressure of the fluid. So the method I came up with that is going to make my life a little easier is I loaded all of my bottles into these cases, put all the carbonation tablets in them, and now I'm just putting the bottling wand in there and letting it fill the bottle up. And I can actually, I tested a couple to make sure I could see the, uh, the, the beer as it's getting up into the neck of the bottle. Uh, this would make my life a lot easier. These cases I bought separately, obviously. The bottles didn't come with these. Uh, the bottles came in cardboard boxes. They would work just fine for this purpose. And yeah, this is a lot easier than trying to fidget with holding the bottle. <laughs> that was not working very well at all. And there we go. That bottle is full. Oops, just about. So, to clarify, uh, don't know if the level of the beer is showing up, because this is a fairly dark bottle, but the level of the beer is about where my finger is. With the wand in the bottle, I was aiming to bring the, the liquid all the way up to just about where the cap would end. Uh, remove the wand, the level goes down to about there. Works perfect. And, uh... Yeah, so this system of prepping all my bottles and then just one at a time with a wand is working great for me. It's much easier than what I was doing. And I'll bring you back uh, when I'm done with this. See you soon. Welcome back. Bottling is finally done. Uh, it took a while. It took uh, well over an hour, probably close to two. Uh, but that's because I brewed a lot more than I normally would in a single uh, single session. I did two great big buckets where I would normally do one. They're not all on camera. Uh, you can, looks like you can see, yeah, two and just the start of the third. It's actually four of these full. <laughs> uh, out of each 23 liter, just over six U.S. fluid gallon buckets, I get typically... Uh, 
44 of these bottles full. Uh, as I said before, these are 500 milliliter bottles. I have looked that up since the last time. That is just shy of 17 US fluid ounces. Uh, 16.9. Um, for those doing the math that know the, uh, the metric system, 44 is not, 44 500 milliliter bottles is not 23 liters. You always lose a little bit. Uh, what's left at the bottom, the last liter or so that's left at the bottom of that bucket, you don't want to drink. <laughs> it's almost entirely your, the, your yeast with just a little bit of fluid left over. You don't want to drink that. You're, you're always going to lose a little bit. Now, it has to sit in this bottle, condition and carbonate, and uh, typically that can take anywhere from a week to two weeks. The quick and easy check is you just squeeze the bottle in there. It, it looks like it's barely showing up, but uh, yeah. So like this compresses quite easily. As it carbonates, it'll get harder and harder to do that. And if you squeeze the bottle and it is just rock solid, uh, it's fully carbonated. It may not be fully conditioned, but it's fully carbonated. If you find it's carbonated after three days, if you like drinking it, hey, go for it. If you want to drink it sooner than that, your beer, do what you want. Um, I recommend letting it sit for at least a week. After two weeks, it's as carbonated as it's going to get. If there's still some give in the bottle after two weeks, you have a light carbonation instead of a, a heavy carbonation. And yeah, that's pretty much that. Now I'm going to push these out of the way and we can talk a bit about costs because my tablet is hidden on the other side of these. Uh, by the way, the reason my tablet's down there is because I've been doing this for almost two hours. I've been watching YouTube videos for almost two hours while I do this. So, as I said at the beginning, I wanted to go over the actual real numbers of the cost. In the last video, I gave some generalizations. Uh, what I'm going to talk about here isn't the cost of all of my equipment, although I do own everything on this list. Uh, what I really want to talk about is what a little cost to start up equipment wise. This isn't including basic kitchen equipment like a pot and you know a, a measuring cup and other things like that. Uh, so the bottling bucket and again before I actually before I get into this these prices are all Canadian and they're all from the web almost all of them are from the uh, the store I buy from. The sole exception being the price of those plastic bottles because, uh, to my knowledge, he doesn't carry those plastic bottles and I can't remember, I can't find a website for the store I bought them from, so I just looked around until I found a store that was selling them for roughly the same price I paid. So this bottling bucket uh, is $23.95. That does not include the airlock. Uh, does include the tap, obviously. Um, the Airlock is about 250. You also have to buy a lid that has a hole in it or drill a hole yourself if you have the tools to do so. That's fine. Uh, if you have to buy the lid, you're looking at about four bucks. Uh, I said the airlock was 250. And sanitizer. Uh, this is a cost that you're going to recur over and over again. However, I believe, as I said before, one of these little capfuls is enough to make enough sanitizing fluid to fill this bucket. This thing is five dollars. Not terribly expensive. The bottles that uh, I was using. Now again, this is not from Shortshanger, which is the uh, the store I buy for everything from. This is from another store. Um, I paid right around or just under a dollar a bottle. I found them on a, on a website that I. Probably won't link because I don't know how reputable they are. I don't know anything about them. Uh, but uh, they had them listed for 24 bottles for $22.75. You need 44 bottles, like I said earlier, which means you're going to buy two, two fours of them, 43 50 
So if you're just going bottling bucket, your airlock, your bottles, that type of stuff, uh, your sanitizing fluid, you definitely need that. You're looking at a, a equipment startup of just under $79. If you want to go with a transfer system, the bottling wand can a little bit more money. The transfer system, uh, where is it here? I didn't organize this very well. Ah, the auto siphon, which is this portion here with the plunger, is $14.95, $15. The hose was right around $2 a foot. I think I have about three feet worth, so about six bucks. And the bottling wand, which can be with or without a spring, depending on your preference, uh, was, where's my bottling wand? Here we go, $5, $4.99. Now, the bucket is a little cheaper than this one, and uh, da, 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 1995, and it, uh, with short finger at least, that includes the pre-drilled lid, the airlock and plug, all that. That's all part of the, gross. It's all part of the same press deck. Um, again, counting the bottles. Uh, you're looking at a startup of $94 and just, just over $94. So almost a $20 difference. Uh, oh, and caps, sorry. Uh, that's all. The, the bottle caps are also included in the total prices I quoted. Bottle caps were $10 uh, for 100 right around $0.10 cents a bottle cap. The differences uh, in using them. Once I came up with a system that worked well for the bottling hose, whoops, let's get that off camera. <laughs> I decided to, once there wasn't enough left of the uh, red ale to fill a bottle outside the sample. Uh, as I was saying, uh, once I had come up with a, a, a system that worked really well with this hose uh, and the bottling wand, I had a lot more control than I'm used to with the tap. Uh, I had zero spillage. Easy to control, not as much foam, zero spillage. The tap, pretty easy to use, a little cheaper, it's just shy of $20 cheaper, uh, all total, all equipment totaled. Um, but I did end up with some spillage. Also, you do need to take this thing apart periodically, uh, as in take the, the spout off the bottle, make sure everything's nice and clean, put it back together, and do a leak test. Um, leak test is just assemble it, put a few uh, put a few liters, a couple gallons of water in here, make sure it's not leaking. Um, and it's very important that when you do that, that if you have to use a tool, don't use it on the inside of the bucket. You don't want tool marks on the inside. Uh, if you have to use a, a clamp or something, use it out here, not on the part that is inside the bucket that's going to be submerged in your beer. So, yeah, pros and cons, a little bit more expensive, a lot more control, M uh, cheaper startup cost, uh, especially just like the bucket and all that. Like, the bucket is more expensive, admittedly, but it is a definitely a cheaper startup cost. Um, and as I understand it, you can just get the hose and the wand and connect it to here. Uh, I believe I said the wand was five dollars and the hose was about six bucks so eleven dollars on top of the cost of this you're still a little under you know, not having a transfer system um, these prices are again for single bucket brewing which is perfectly fine if you do the type of brewing I do I don't customize my beer recipes that much which means I don't need to transfer the beer I don't need to do what's called racking it and yeah, I do believe that's all of the equipment, and uh, admittedly the sanitizer isn't technically equipment, it's a consumable, but it's something we absolutely must have, so I included it in the, uh, the overall price. You don't want to use, uh, you don't want to use the, the soap you use on your dishes uh, for this stuff. In fact, when I clean these, I flush them up very thoroughly with hot water, and I clean them with sanitizer, essentially. The... 
Mr. Beardkins. This is a two gallon bucket, a two gallon cask. Uh, in fact, the two gallon mark is right where my finger is. Um, this is six. This currently, uh, last, well, I say currently, I looked approximately a week ago. The starter kit, which comes with enough stuff to make one batch of beer, uh, enough bottles to bottle everything this can make, the carbonization tablets, and the uh, the, the can of uh, liquid malt extract, is around $65. That makes just under a 2-4 worth of beer. The equipment's reusable, the bottle's reusable, the cap's reusable. The, as I said before, the, the, it's, it's the cans of the, uh, it's called liquid malt extract, that are the expensive part. I don't know that I could recommend these unless you just want to try a one-off, uh, in which case it's certainly cheaper than buying all of this equipment for a one-off. Uh, if, if you just want to try an experiment, see if maybe you'll enjoy it. It's cheaper, but in the long run you're not, probably not going to use this equipment a whole lot, uh, unless you have some secondary thing you want to use it for. Um, I use it for overflow on my mead. Uh, I will be using it for cider. My roommate already does use it for cider. In fact, he specifically bought the uh, the cider version of it, which is just clear. That's literally the only difference. Depending on where you live, the Mr. Beer stuff may be more accessible, maybe cheaper. Where I live, it's not. <laughs> it's it's just not. It's it's not really a viable option for me. So yeah, you're looking at one of these two options as your startups. 74, no, 78, 94-ish. That's a lot of money for startup. Uh, well, I'll grant you that, but virtually everything is re reusable. Start saying it's consumable. Sooner or later, you have to replace your caps, your bottle caps. Sooner or later, you have to replace your bottles, but they will last longer than your bottle caps. And I think that basically sums it up. That's, uh, I think that's all for today. I will be doing another one of these in the future with regards to mead. Uh, I am looking forward to doing that one. That one's going to be a long one to film, though. <laughs> but more on that another time. Uh, for now, if you enjoyed this, I'd appreciate it if you hit the, the like button, if you either enjoyed it, found it useful, whatever. Uh, and have fun, and absolutely the most important thing, drink responsibly. Brewing at home is a great hobby. It's lots of fun. I really do enjoy it. But always, always drink responsibly. Thank you for watching.